The market melt-up is here. Fear of missing out is now overly present within the US stock market as we have now hit a stage of euphoria the world has never seen. In many ways, this has even surpassed the dot-com boom and bust, which was a magical time that took well over a decade to recover from. The question is, what will happen this time around? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to look at the stock market and some concerns. Let's begin. The Dow Jones closed above 26,000 for the first time on Wednesday. The most recent gains have been powered in part by a sudden hunger for stocks among certain money managers and individual investors who have long been weary of the nine-year bull market. You've seen this in the news, watching the stock market rocket higher and higher. And meanwhile, the central banks of the world have been very, very cautious making sure that interest rates are at a realistic level because they want the stock market to continue to rise. They want people to continue to buy homes. They want business to continue flowing and it will be the destruction of all currencies. They are claiming that Apple and other companies are going to bring back their profits onshore, pay up their taxes, and this would somehow fill in the shortfall that the US government is experiencing. This is, of course, never going to be enough. They could bring in trillions of dollars of taxes. It's still not enough because it's a black hole and it isn't allowed to fix any issue, no matter how much money they bring in. S&P 500 currently at this time rocketing higher and higher. Since the financial crisis, we have seen this market continuously setting new highs since 2009. And you can see that in terms of technical analysis, it is officially the most overbought ever, ever in history. And we can see that this is not just in the US, we are seeing stock markets all around the world that are benefiting from central bank monetary easing. But the U.S. stock market is definitely the king this time around. Equity inflows at this time are also looking to be record highs. You can see that more and more money has been pouring into all of these different equities. It is showing us the fact that other markets need to be subdued, whether it's, uh, let's say, agricultural commodities or any others are minuscule in comparison to what's going on with equities right now. Since the year 2009, we've seen a rise, but just in the last year, we have seen a dramatic torrent that has found its way flowing inward into US equities in particular. Of course, when central banks are printing money out of thin air and buying the shares, this can happen very easily. Some stocks have been benefiting from this for a great deal of time now. Comparison of bull markets 1987 and 2009, index levels. You can see here the two charts. Looking at this, you'll see what's happening now. The uh, current bull market left and bottom and the 1987 to 2000 bull market right and top. And you'll see the way that this chart might be a little confusing for you, but look at what happened here. It is a juncture point currently that they're trying to show us the irrational exuberance that took place. Will it be the case this time around? Will we experience higher and higher levels on the SMP? Or will it be stagnant? Perhaps will it crash? I think that this is all a result of what the central banks decide to do. If we see interest rates rising, they would have to rise to a much larger degree in order for it to have a major effect on the stock market. Because ultimately, they're still historically extremely cheap. But there is a trickle effect. Look at how it works for mortgage rates, for example. 
When you're at historic lows, that means mortgage rates are at historic lows as well. However, it doesn't take that much for mortgage rates to rise to a level that people can't afford them anymore. So they have to sell their properties. But it doesn't happen right away, unless they're on a variable rate, which of course many are. But a lot of people, they have these three-year, five-year mortgages that are expiring in a few years from now. So they won't feel it for a few years, but they have to feel it at some point. Whether it's variable and they're going to feel it right away, or it's coming in a few years from now. And then that has a negative impact on everything else. A lot of people, they're not really able to handle more debt. They're at the maximum. In Canada, for example, where Canadians are at the most debt they've ever been historically, we can see that $200 more per month, and they may risk bankruptcy. 200 that's it. Interest rates need to rise just a small percentage to make a big impact on their lives. Now, directly on the stock market, it's not as a big deal. That's why they do these interest rate hikes so slowly. And I've shown you here before on this channel how they always rise. You can check it out. Look at the Fed funds rate the previous time around. They did this. It's the smallest little bit as time goes on. And as soon as they reach a reasonable level, they have to drop them again because there's another recession. And that's the way this will, of course, work. Now, they could be forced to rising it extremely fast. But at this time, this is what we can say. If something changes. Well, we'll have to address it at that moment. I don't really like to look at a previous chart necessarily and say this is what's going to happen. I like to use it as an indicator and add it to the other indicators as well. Okay, just a couple more. I'll be very quick. Look at this time around. You know, you can see 95 to 99. GDP growth was much more significant. Now with the fake GDP numbers, because remember that we were using different numbers previously. They were able to use the indicators that showed us a more reasonable version of the truth. I don't know where they're, you know, the numbers they were using to calculate specifically, but I know that as time goes on, it just gets more fake. Look at Obamacare increasing GDP by 5% in one quarter. We know that's not real. So GDP growth here, 4%. Currently, they're claiming 1.9%. I don't believe it for a second. And you'll see these other things like uh, productivity growth down significantly. The only things that are up are the federal debt. When you see how bad it has become over these years. Things are generally getting worse. Look, look at the Fed funds rate. I mean, interest rates were significantly higher at that point. Fed funds rate being at about 5%. Now it's at, you know, well, this is a little outdated, it's 20, up to 2016, it's averaging, but you'll see that whether it's at 1%, 1.5%, whatever it might be at the time you watch this video. Ultimately, it's significantly lower than it was at that time, and we are suggesting that, you know, let's keep the interest rates low because that's going to stimulate the economy. The economy was doing well at the time, in the 90s. And yet the Fed funds rate, interest rates, mortgage rates, they were significantly higher. So we're being told a lie. But what else is new? All right. High yield bonds flows versus total returns. What I wanted to mention with this is that typically you would see high yield different investments like, let's say, junk bonds. So you go to a country that would be uh, considered more risky buy up their debt, and you would make a greater return. That doesn't exist anymore because the returns are not there. So more and more companies are turning their portfolios over into equities. They're saying, forget it. Why would I go through all that risk when I could just buy U.S. equities and follow what the central banks are doing? Well, that's what's happening. A lot of individuals just follow along. They are insignificant. But you see the central banks going in one direction, the corporations follow along, and then individuals are the little fish floating by, not making any waves. 
Modern classics of the bubble world, I've shown you this before, just wanted to touch on it. It only takes about three and a half years for that final price rise to come in, the irrational exuberance, the melt up before everything comes back down. We will see what happens. Of course, this is looking back in the pages of history. It's a lot easier to define that. But what I'm concerned about is that the market has left its realism. It's left the fundamentals, if you will, and they've turned over into a euphoria. The euphoria is unfortunate that it's affecting real people's lives. It's affecting their pension funds. It's affecting their child's different um, you know, college funds and uh, different education funds that they have set up and retirement funds people have set up and everything else. That's all in line with this. It's all affected. And they've talked about it. The governor of California said the next time around, we are going to have to cut pensions. You tell me. Is that a concern? I don't know. A lot of people don't think so because the market is rising. And uh, you will see the comments down below where the people say, shut up, the market is rising. And I just say, yes, the market is rising. Yes, the market will continue to rise as long as central banks print money. If the market starts falling dramatically, central banks will print currency until it is destroyed. They will destroy the currency if need be but the market is rising. I understand that. Thank you very much for your comments. Take care. Please give me a thumbs up if you found the video informative. Last but not least, if you found this video informative, then I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. Just go over to Amazon, they have a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. I just wanted to make note that I don't mention this often, but I also have an audiobook version of Global Economic Collapse. So if you're not into reading, you can always check out the audiobook. It is available on my website, themoneygps.com. So take a look there. And uh, so much more. Check it out on the links below. Take care.